Okay, let's talk about how to reduce fractions. So this is gonna be a pretty quick video on the main concepts of how to deal with fractions and how to reduce them. So we're gonna be using some fairly simple examples, but we're gonna be focusing in on the principles you need to know in order to reduce a fraction. Okay, now here we have a fraction 20 over 30, and it's equivalent to the simpler fraction 2 thirds. So this fraction has been reduced to this fraction. And in mathematics, it's not like an, you know, a um, kind of like an optional thing. Okay, your math teacher isn't going to be like, oh, I'm okay if you just give me this as your final answer. No, you're not done, okay, until you have simplified your fractions. Okay, so <laughs> from a math mathematics standpoint, okay, don't stop, you know, your, your, if your problem takes you to a point like this, all right, you have to look to see, hey, can you uh, simplify or reduce the fraction, all right? So we're going to get into this in a second. Again, this is going to be a quick review, but uh, before we get started, let me introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and if you like my teaching instruction, I have over 100 plus math courses uh, I'm going to leave a link to my math program in the description of this video. So um, whether you're in middle school, high school, pre-algebra, algebra one, more advanced courses, uh, check out my math program. That's where my best work is at. And of course, if you're new to my YouTube uh, channel, consider subscribing as I have hundreds and hundreds of math videos. I'm posting stuff all the time. So again, if you like the way I teach math, there is going to be a lot of content on my channel that can help you out. And of course, if this video, uh, you know, helps you out, consider giving it a like. All right, let's get into this. All right, so let's talk about this example, 20 over 30, okay? Now, the essence of reducing a fraction, all right, all has to do with your ability to factor, okay? Factor, all right? So what are we talking about factoring? So let's go ahead and just quickly look at, uh, 20. Okay. So what are factors or factors of 20? Well, factors are multiples. It's, if we take 20, we have to ask ourselves what two things, uh, such that we multiply them together to numbers. Okay. Uh, uh, when we multiply those numbers together, we get, uh, 20. Okay. So two times 10, for example, are, uh, factors of 20. Okay. But they're not the only factors. All right, then we have four times five. So these are factors of 20. Now, there's a, this whole topic about factoring, okay, and factors. We can talk about prime factors and all that kind of good stuff. That's, uh, you know, I don't want to go down another uh, tangent here. Uh, I want to just focus on the main concept of factoring or reducing a fraction, okay? So it's necessary that you know how to factor a number okay so uh, hopefully this is familiar to you okay and probably a lot of you let's kind of go back up here if you looked at this problem you're like oh yeah this is easy 20 over 30 uh, that's gonna be equal to two-thirds and maybe some of you went like that cross canceled oh you, this is obviously a super simple fraction to reduce but let's look at conceptually what was going on and then of course we'll look at some little more uh, challenging problems here in a second so What's going on in your brain, all right, what, you're, what you've have, uh, been learning since you've been in elementary school is you're saying, okay, your, your teacher taught you, here we have 20, here we have 30. The factors of 20, or we can factor 20 as 2 times 10, and then 30 we can factor as 3 times 10. So the whole idea behind reducing a fraction is to try to find like factors, okay, the same factors uh, in the numerator and the denominator, okay? So what we try to do is break up these individual numbers such in a way we have like factors. In other words, what are like factors? It's the same factor in both the numerator and denominator. So here we have a 10 sitting up here in the numerator, and here we have a 10 down here in the denominator. And this is awesome, okay? Because this is unlocks our ability to simplify this fraction. So when you have... Um, like factors, okay, one the numerator, one the denominator, you can simply cross-cancel them, 
and that is equal to two thirds in this particular example because that's what's remaining is this right here okay so now let's just break this up uh, look at let's look at this a little bit differently okay just to kind of stress some things we can do in fractions so here we have 2 times 10 and then this is 3 times 10 so I have uh, what I can do is I could pull this apart okay this fraction I have 2 thirds times 10 over 10 okay that's what this means as well okay so I can break this fraction up in other words if I, I multiply 2 thirds times 10 over 10 I would get back to this okay and what's uh, a number divided by itself well this is just a big old one okay any number divided by itself is one one times any number is just that number okay but what you really you know this course is just kind of coming at it in a different way but what you really want to focus on the key essence to reducing a fraction is to look for like factors so you got to look at the numerator and denominator and break them up okay and look for opportunities where you can find like factors now of course with easy numbers uh this is um, you know pretty obvious but with more challenging numbers you're gonna have to do some work on your factoring okay and then you break up all your factors both in the uh, numerator and denominator and your cross cancel etc again this is gonna be a quick review on the concept of how to reduce a fraction but now let's go ahead and look at some other examples real quick all right so let's take a look at these two numeric examples and if you want to go ahead and pause the video and quickly knock these guys out, that would be fine. Of course, I'm going to do these problems here. All right, so let's take this uh, problem. 6 over 15, let's go ahead and simplify or reduce. That means the same thing in math. So here, I'm saying, okay, what's factors of 6? Well, 3 times 2 or 2 times 3, let's write it this way. And then what's uh, factors of 15? How about uh, 3 times 5 is 15, right? Now, of course, 1 times 15, those are factors. 1 is always a factor. So here, what I'm looking at is opportunities to cr uh, cross-cancel like factors. So do I see any like factors? In other words, uh, the same factor in both the numerator and denominator? Yes, I do. Here's a three, here's another three. So I could just go ahead and get rid of these. And what's left is the two fifths, okay? So this is the answer. All right, again, a very, very basic problem, but uh, we're emphasizing the mechanics of how to reduce a fraction here, okay? So let's go to this next problem. All right, 25 over 30. And of course, we're gonna do a little algebra problem here in a second. All right, so 25 over 30. Again, the factors are 25. There's only one pair. That's 5 times 5. Of course, 1 is always a factor of all numbers. So 5 times 5 is 25. And then here for 30, you say, oh, that's going to be 5 times 6. Now, if you wrote this as, say, 3 times 10, okay, 3 times 10, th these are factors of 30 as well, okay? But here's the problem, okay? Uh, we don't have like factors. Right, so you're like, oh boy, uh, you know, this is not, you know, I can't reduce this because I have a 10 here, three here, and there's no three or 10 in the numerator. Well, you got to be really careful with this because um, if you didn't see, oh, okay, I can get a five, I have a five in the numerator, I can get a five down here in the denominator. What you can do, what you should do, all right, you're not done until you completely factor, all right? So here, this three times 10. I can write this as 3 times 10 is 2 times 5, all right? So this is an example of us prime factoring, so we can see all the factors, all right? Just in case it wasn't obvious that you can have a 5 here. And now in this case, this is a good example of what uh, we got to be very careful here, okay? So we have like factors in both the numerator and denominator. So I have a 5 here, all right? I have another 5 over here. Okay, and then I have a 5 down here. So we're going to cross-cancel the 5s, right? Because we have like factors in both the numerator and denominator. But the question is, does this 5 here, does it knock out both of these 5s? The answer is no, okay? It's 1 for 1, right? So I have a 5 down here, so all I can do 
is take out one of the fives in the numerator, okay? So it's just one from one, so that's gonna leave us with five remaining in the numerator, and then what's down here in the denominator, it's three times two, which of course is six, okay? So that's how we deal with a situation where, uh, you know, if you're not done factoring, you're not gonna be able to see all the factors available to uh, whether you can, in fact, cross cancel. Now, if you were saying, okay, 25 is five times five, and I know 30 is uh, five times six, because you're, you know, you already have this factor, like, oh, okay, this can be a factor two, then obviously this makes your life easier, just cross cancel, and you're left with five over six. But this is a good illustration of like factors, you only are one from one, okay? All right, so now let's carry this uh, concept over to dealing with a, uh, a fraction that involves variables. All right, so the same concept applies, all right? So let's go ahead and factor this guy here. So three times x squared. So this is gonna be three, the factors of three are just three and one. So we'll just write this as three. And then x squared is the same thing as x times x, okay? So x times x is x squared. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look at the denominator. I have nine, so that could be three times three, that's nine. And then I have x cubed, so that could be x times x times x, all right? So now let's go ahead and uh, simplify or reduce this particular fraction. All right, so we have three here, we have one three, and I have two threes down here, but it's only one to one, okay? So I can cross cancel one pair of threes. So I have this three remaining down here in the denominator. And then I have this x, these x's can take care of each other, okay? They can be, uh, remember it's one to one, and I have another pair of x's, they can, they can go. So what's left over is this three, this x and nothing up in the numerator, but technically there's always a one up there, okay? So this particular fraction would uh, simplify as one over three times x, okay? That's what's remaining, and there you go. Okay, so a quick review on how to reduce fractions. Another uh, word we use in uh, mathematics is simplify, okay? Because we don't want to write an answer or an expression, okay, or a fraction that's not fully simplified. In math, we like things fully simplified. So this is equivalent to this, okay? All these answers, right, 25 over 30 mathematically is equivalent to five over six. And we always want to write the simplest form of a fraction. Okay, so if you understand uh, these concepts that I went over, uh, then you're going to be, you know, good to go when it comes to reducing fractions. Now, of course, there's going to be uh, more difficult, challenging problems. But uh, again, don't let that bother you. What you got to uh, focus on is your ability to factor these, okay? And just be very careful when you're cross-canceling and looking for alike factors. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics journey. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.